Firstly, if I may just comment on what I've just been listening to this morning to the sub-postmasters and uh, their families. Uh, Fujitsu would like to apologise for our part in this appalling miscarriage of justice. We were involved from the very start. We did have bugs and errors in the system and we did help the uh, post office in their prosecutions of the sub-postmasters. For that, we are truly sorry. To your question, Chair, around our ethics, I believe we are an ethical company. The company today is quite different to the company in the early 2000s, and clearly we need to demonstrate that both to our customers, to government, and to the wider society. And they're piling the cases through. But they, it, they're just not moving. They hit a dead end once they go into, uh, into the department. So are you saying that the people who are processing the claim are not busting a gut to actually get the job done? Oh, gosh, yes. I mean, that, I mean after, my, after my claim had gone in, uh, and mine's just in the queue like everyone else is, not being dealt with specially at all. But I mean, uh, after mine had gone in, it took them, I think it was 53 days before they asked three very simple questions. I mean, it's, it's madness. The whole thing is madness. It's not been true. And there's no transparency behind it, which is even more frustrating. We, you know, we do not know what's happening to these cases once they disappear in there. I mean, I know we like red tape in this country, but I mean, this is insane. No, it's bogged down. Yeah, absolutely bogged down in red tape. And yeah, I, I just thought I'd made a hash of it. But when ultimately I went to court and it, it made the national papers and people rang me up after seeing the piece in the paper and I realised it wasn't me, it wasn't just me, then you, it just makes you so angry that, you know, they literally gaslit me for about three years that you know, and turned me, well, not into a basket case, but pretty much. Um, and then I just, that lit a fire. Um, and yeah, thank goodness we had the publicity because we joined up. But, you know, that's, it's wrong, but it's taken this long and this much money to get to where we are today. And, I, you know, I know a lot of the group and they are literally falling apart, <coughs> waiting for the end of this to be able to put it behind them. Well... Up to this morning, we've had in excess of 200 inquiries related to Horizon shortfall. New inquiries. New inquiries. Uh, we've equally had um, in excess of 20 that have asked us to relook at settled HSS cases. Um, uh, as I said earlier, my gut feel on this is there are a significant number of undersettled matters. Um, I take some of that intelligence from a small cohort of cases where we've secured substantial increased offers mm -hmm. um, that are still unsatisfactory. Um, in one case, uh, an offer from that went from 120,000 to 220,000. Um, in another case, um, similarish numbers, but on average at least a 25% increase. Um, so there is real strong concern there that there are a number of undersettled matters um, because the vast rump of those cases were settled without legal advice and in, and in fact settled at a time when interim payments were not routinely offered. Um, Neil, could you just take us through how many people in, in your understanding have actually received anything? Because as we've tried to put the picture together from public records, frankly, it's impossible to tell how many people have actually had what they're due? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of moving parts to this, and obviously different schemes produce different outcomes. Uh, as my understanding in, in rough numbers that from the uh, historical shortfall scheme, the majority of the original applicants have been paid out. Uh, there's a significant issue with that in that most of those were paid out without the benefit of legal advice. Um, it's something that exercises us greatly. Um, but it's one of those things where there's so much to go at, where do you prioritise? Uh, within the convicted uh, cohort of clients that we have, uh, of the 73, uh, three have been fully paid out. Three? Three. Just three? Three, and then another 
it's a slightly moving number, but between 28 and 30 have accepted the fixed £600,000 proposal. Um, most of the others have had some form of interim compensation.